Hey everybody, about a year and a half ago, I built this DIY 100 amp hour battery. And this was a really great project. I really enjoyed this one, but they don't make these cells anymore. These were modules from battery hookup. Uh, if you guys wanna see the video, I'll include this down in the video description. But I have a friend that wants to get a similar build. So what I ended up doing is taking a 100 amp hour battery, removing it from its case, and you can see it fits inside this. So I'm just gonna do a brief video about how I put this together, what type of connections I'm using. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this small off the cuff video. Now the battery we're gonna be using in the project today came out of my Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. You have aluminum bus bars. Uh, this is your balance lead where it can you know, check the individual voltage for each cell. Uh, you have your main positive here, your main negative, and each of the balance plugs are screwed in and glued down, so good there. These are grade A cells. Uh, they are new quality. I was able to pull full 100 amp hours out of this battery, and the build quality is just really good. Uh, the cells are compressed together with these straps. They're in these individual holders. The only thing is the uh, BMS on this does not have low temperature charging protection. Now the BMS sits right here and the balance lead plugs into that. So this is the battery we're gonna be using for the build. Now just for your guys' information, the width of the battery is eight and an eighth inch wide. Now the height of the battery is very important because this barely fits into the case when you shut the lid. And I am measuring seven and five eighths inches. So you do not wanna go over seven and five eighths inches. Now, while I'm working on the battery, I've gone ahead and covered up all the terminals with electrical tape so we don't short anything out. So it's resting up against this side of the case. Now I've cut this three quarter inch foam, it's very dense, and I'm basically gonna just put this in here and make sure it's resting up against this side. And then I have plenty of room for my electronics and wiring over here. Remember the BMS sits on top, the balance lead plugs in right here. So I am going to put a piece of wood down in here, cut custom size so that the battery does not move around. Now this battery did come with a six gauge silicone wire that I plan to use on a fuse block. So basically that'll go directly to a fuse block in the bottom. Now the negative cable wasn't long enough so I had to extend it. Basically I just uh, took another section of six gauge silicone wire, crimped on some ring terminals, and now that's long enough to go down to my fuse block. Now I've gone ahead and cut out this piece of board and mounted my fuse block to it. This is 3 8 inch thick common board, it's pine. You can pick this up at Lowe's or Home Depot and cut it to size. Now on the fuse block here, you have two main connections. You have your main negative connection and then your main positive connection. So your wires coming off the BMS connect to here and this goes to the positive terminal on the battery. And then you have six different connections for your outputs. You have six negative connections and then six positive connections that are fused. Now this fuse block does come with a protective cover just in case something falls down inside the case, you don't have to worry about a short circuit. Now I did make one modification to this. I trimmed away a little bit of the plastic so that the main positive wire could mount like this and go to the main terminal on the battery. These are the four connections that I'll be putting on the outside of the battery box. Now the first one is a 12 volt cigarette plug. This has 12 gauge wire with ring terminals. This will connect up to the fuse block and it will be powered on all the time. It's good for 20 amps. This one here is an XT60 connection, also using 12 gauge wire with ring terminals. This one will also be powered on all the time and will support up to 20 amps. Now the next two, I wanted to be able to turn these off to save on power. This supports three USB ports that are quick charge 3.0. And I just put a power switch on the positive line. And so if I wanna turn this off, you just turn this power switch off and it disables these USB ports. Now the final one is a voltmeter. It has two USB-C ports and a USB-A port and you can turn it on and off by pressing this button. So this one has a built-in power switch. Both of these just connect right up to the fuse panel with the positive and negative connections. Now, all of these are very easy to mount to the battery box because they're cylindrical. All you have to do is drill the appropriate sized hole and you stick this through and then screw this on on the back and it holds down each of the connections. Now for drilling those holes, I always recommend using a spade bit kit this is the Bosch Daredevil kit. These are super sharp and they work really good on the plastic for these ammo boxes. So as long as you have a drill, you can drill the appropriate sized hole. Now what I like to do is just measure where I have the holes so they're symmetrical and then I just choose the right spade bit for each of the outputs. And now we're good to plug each one in. Now I've gone ahead and mounted each of these on the front of the battery box and you can see it's a really clean look. Now, of course, you could choose any output that you wanted to use. These were just the ones that we decided with on this project. So pretty much the final step is just installing the battery and the fuse block and then attaching all your positive and negative connections up and then you're good to go. 
So this part of the project, my friend wanted to help me assemble everything together so he could see how it worked. I set up a time lapse on my camera and it only took us about 20 minutes to get everything put together. And I was really happy with the way that it turned out. Now total cost for this project is gonna be around $259 for the battery itself. Of course, you'd have to tear that down and remove it from its original case. And then you have to purchase all the other accessories, which came out to be around $85. So we're still under $350 total for this really convenient portable battery setup. And this is way better than just using a standalone battery because you have all your outputs, it's easy to carry, and it's really compact. Now I mostly use these batteries to power my 12 volt compressor fridges while camping and it's awesome not to have to take ice with you. Now you can easily charge this up with a solar panel or using your car charging system to get an unlimited runtime on that 12 volt compressor fridge. Anyway guys, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you guys like this type of content, I have a lot of videos on my channel that you may find interesting. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.